Good morning, friends. A very happy Saturday to you. It's the start of Memorial Day weekend. It's the start of our summer. And whatever other plans you have made for the next few days, I am really happy to be spending these moments with you. So let's roll the introduction and let's get going. Friends, we're going to continue reading through the uh, Sermon on the Mount in these next few days. And today our verses are uh, from the fifth chapter of Matthew. And we'll be reading verse 17 through 20. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter... Not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until everything is accomplished. And therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, that's our word for today. Not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until everything has been accomplished or fulfilled. Sometimes religion can get very legalistic. We have a set of rules or codes or restrictions that we place on things. You shall do this. You shall not do that. The Ten Commandments read like a kind of set of proscriptions. Don't do this or don't do that or don't do the other. But Jesus came in order for us to understand that buried on the other side of all of these codes and rules and restrictions is a revelation of the heart of God, God's own heart and purpose for us. Jesus came to show us that in order to truly fulfill our faith, we have to we have to start with the inside part. Now, in the next few days, as we read through the Sermon on the Mount, we're going to see examples where Jesus takes particular aspects of the law and he uh, says, this is how it's going to be. But the, the main theme is set in today's reading. Jesus has not come to abolish the law. He has come to fulfill it. Now, the reason he needs to say that is that the way that Christians began living out the law of Moses and the law uh, that the prophets helped illuminate, the way Jesus and his disciples began to live it out was different than the customs that people were used to. And uh, these customs being different, people thought, well, that he was just abandoning the law altogether. But instead, he was here to show that he was fulfilling in a more complete way, what God had been trying to get us to do all along. Now, this is interesting to me today, and I want to bring it up because uh, we received uh, a message from our bishop over the weekend, or over uh, yesterday, and he was saying that uh, though the federal government and some, some state and local officials, uh, depending on the counties where we live, have declared that it is safe for people to begin gathering in worship again. That for we who are United Methodists here in, in our annual conference, he is, uh, he is requesting, he is uh, mandating that we not gather for in, per, in person worship. Uh, but we refrain from doing that. And his uh, word, our bishop's word to us, is that uh, when we've written a, a plan that makes sense and can be approved by our district superintendent, uh, and it takes all necessary precautions to make sure that no one would become infected um, with the COVID-19 virus, then we can begin in-person gathering again. But in the meantime, we'll continue to gather online in our uh, worship services as we've been doing. Bishop was quick to point out, as many of my colleagues have been pointing out on Facebook, that the church never closed. 
we have not been gathering in person for worship, but we are still the church. We um, have titled this series, We Are the Church, for that very purpose. We continue to be alive as the church. We continue to thrive as the church, but we're not doing things the way that we've always done them right now. And Jesus was saying that we may not be doing things the way we've always done them, but this is not in order to get rid of the law. It's in order to complete the law and the prophets. So in that spirit, uh, recognizing that on a weekend when we celebrate our, our, our freedoms as a nation, we still are people under authority, under the authority of Christ, and in this case, under the authority of our bishop. Uh, we work, will continue to refrain from in-person worship. I will meet you online tomorrow for our worship. And I know that you and I long to have that time when we can come together and see each other face to face again. But in the meantime, uh, God will be with us and we can be strong together and we can get through this. I want to take this moment here to uh, say a word of appreciation for uh, Gracie Roney's word yesterday. Uh, it really struck home with me and uh, she was reading one of my uh, favorite verses from the New Testament and uh, I really appreciated her word to me. And uh, so Gracie, thank you very much. Um, why don't we be in prayer? Loving God, the, the days stretch on and we are, praying with all earnestness that a, a, a vaccine or antivirus can be found that will come and help us get a handle on this time of pandemic. And we are praying that as we reemerge, Lord, from our homes, we will do so in ways that are safe and put no one at risk. But we're asking God that you send your hand of mercy upon our country and upon our state and upon our church, upon your church, and you bless us, bless us with patience, with strength, and with renewed energy to be your church in every circumstance and in every way. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Friends, I spoke with a colleague yesterday who said that uh, he has a member in his congregation, a young man who has been symptom free, but because of a, a particular set of circumstances, was diagnosed with the COVID virus, uh, was tested positive, even though he has no symptoms. This uh, young man has been on home quarantine for 60 days now, and he continues to test positive, even though he has no symptoms. This one anecdotal story is reason enough for all of us to continue to take every single precaution. We never know who may be walking among us with no symptoms at all and carrying the virus. So please be careful out there. Uh, wear your masks, wash your hands, read a psalm today and tell somebody that you love them. Happy Saturday and I'll talk to you again after worship tomorrow on Memorial Day. God bless.